Hey gang, Troy Dean here. Welcome to another live stream in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. I hope this is working. Please let me know if you can see me and hear my voice by leaving a comment on the uh, below the video. Let me know that it's all working and maybe let me know which country you are tuning in from and uh, then we can get cracking on to talk about the why, the what, the how of growth plans and how growth plans really are the secret source to help you scale your agency. Hey, there we go, Jeff Mackey says, see you here. Thanks very much, Jeff, really appreciate that. And you'll have to excuse my voice today. I sound like a drag queen with a hangover and that's because I have, I'm have. i just recovering from a bit of a cold that I'm gonna blame the kids for giving me. Mike Spratt says, yup, hey dude, how are you? I believe we're gonna hang out um, in about an hour from now and you're gonna be a guest on the Agency Hour podcast. So that's very exciting indeed. Uh, can't wait for that. All right, so it looks like we are live and it's all working. Oh, there we go, the Facebook counter has just moved. Someone just liked us on Facebook. How's that? <laughs> That's fantastic. Jane Jones. Hello, Troy. There we go. There we go. There's Jane Jones. Thank you, Jane, for letting us know that it's all working. All right. Hey, look, I'm going to dive right in. Last week on the live stream, we mapped out the simple maths to adding a million dollars in annual recurring revenue to your agency. And we had, you know, it, just to recap that if you haven't seen it, uh, very simple maths. It's 28 clients at $3,000 a month or 14 clients at $6,000 a month or somewhere in between. Very, very simple maths. And a lot of the questions around that and uh, on, the, on the live stream and also a lot of questions that I've had in Messenger and that Natalie has had. Remember, Natalie Vlack is your community manager here in the group. So if you have any questions about anything at all, please uh, message Natalie she can get you connected with replays of live streams that we're doing. She can get you connected with free resources and uh, trainings. And the questions that have been coming in is, well, what is a growth plan? Uh, I talked about it last week on the live stream. It's 28 clients at 3K a month. What are they paying three grand a month for? They're paying for a growth plan. Everyone's saying, well, what the hell's a growth plan? So a couple of things I wanna talk about on today's call. I'm gonna go through the why, what, how, of what a growth plan is, why they're so valuable, why they work, why they are the magic dust and how to put one together. And then next week, we're gonna have a special guest come in to the live stream here in the group. And uh, we're going to see how this special guest pitches a growth plan after pay discovery. I had a call with this person yesterday. They are an agency in Mavericks Club. I'll tell you who it is a little bit later on in the call here, so stick around for that. Uh, someone who's in Mavericks Club who has not been on a live stream or the podcast before, and we hung out on a, on a uh, Velocity call recently, and he said something just off the cuff, and I said, hey, can you and I have a bit of a chat about that, because I think that would be helpful. And uh, we got on a call yesterday, I'm just turning the heater up here, because I'm in Melbourne where it's Arctic. We got on a call yesterday, and I unpacked the way that he's presenting growth plans after a paid discovery session, and my word, it is it's so simple and so elegant and so powerful and converts so well. I said, hey, would you fancy going live in the group to share this with everyone else as a way of inspiring them and letting them know what's possible? And here's a gentleman who was selling growth plans for five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month. That's right, five to 10 grand a month for a growth plan. And he's gonna come in next week uh, here in the in the uh, the group and share exactly how he's pitching growth plans off the back of paid discovery. So stay tuned and I'll let you know who that is uh, coming up a little bit later. All right, I think um, I'm just going to attempt something. I'm going to I'm going to attempt a stunt right now, which is <laughs> bringing up my screen here and seeing if we can uh, share part of a presentation that I did uh, a while ago called The Simplified Agency. I'm just gonna bounce over to this scene here. Oh, see what happens. There we go, I think we're good. I don't know why that's uh, popped up on my screen. That's a little bit annoying, but anyway. Um, okay, I can't seem to move that, which is frustrating. All right, there we go. There is the slide growth plan method. Now this is really the second pillar in what I think is a three-pronged 
uh, a three-step approach to building a simplified agency, right? Uh, the first pillar is the paid discovery method. A lot of you have already got that training. A lot of you are already doing paid discovery. Well done. For those of you who aren't, reach out to Natalie because uh, I gave Natalie a special coupon code yesterday and said, hey, if you're talking to someone and you think they're a really good fit for what we do, feel free to use this coupon code and uh, give them a pretty significant discount on the paid discovery method because we just want to get it into as many hands as possible. So it's entirely at Natalie's discretion when she uses that coupon code. So if you haven't got the paid discovery method, reach out to Natalie, have a conversation about that. That's pillar number one. And paid discovery, remember, the whole idea with paid discovery is that you get paid to pitch your ideas to a client. Maybe it might be worth just going back and um, and showing a couple of things around paid discovery. Uh, let me just show you the usual sales process right? Looks like this. Here's the usual sales process for an agency. Someone puts up their hand and expresses interest in what it is you're doing. You have a pre-qualifying chat with them on messenger or email. You get on a quick call. It's called a triage call. And the purpose of the triage call is to just qualify them and see if they're a good fit, see if they have a budget, see if they know what they're doing, see if they have a plan, uh, see if it's the kind of project that you want to work with and they seem like they might be a good client. Then after the triage call, we put them through to a strategy call. In between, if you're an advanced player at this and you've been doing it a while, you might give them some homework in between the triage call and the strategy call to keep them engaged in your process. You have a strategy session with them. You sort of lay out the plan and they, um, they you know, pick your brain and you give away all your IP for free and tell them how you're going to help them. And then you send them a proposal and then you put them into follow-up and then some you win, um, some you don't, and some you disqualify, right? That's the traditional sales process. A lot of problems with that sales process, which I'll uh, we can talk about later, but really the problem with this uh, process is that during the consideration phase of the buyer's journey, the buyer's journey is really broken up into awareness, consideration, and decision. So uh, when a prospect is aware that they have a problem, they go looking for a solution, then they're considering their options, then they make a decision. The problem with, with the traditional sales process is that you don't have a lot of control or input over the consideration phase of the buyer's journey, right? And it converts at about 25 to 40%. Paid discovery uh, does this. Someone puts up their hand and expresses interest. We again, just have a quick chat on messenger or email or text. Uh, make sure they're you know legit and that it's a legitimate uh, inquiry. We then have an initial call with them, and from that initial call, we sell them paid discovery straight away. So we're pitching something off the very first call if they're a good fit. And the reason this works so well is because paid discovery is typically a low ticket, low risk product that we're pitching them. We're not trying to sell them a twenty thousand dollar website or a five thousand dollar retainer. We're just pitching them a uh, a workshop, a $1,200, $1,500, $3,000 workshop, right? So it's low ticket, it's low risk for the client because there's no ongoing commitment. It's just a one-off thing, right? Then we run the paid discovery and, uh, you know, 85% of the time from paid discovery, you win the client into an ongoing growth plan. The good thing about this is there's no consideration stage. We just do away with the consideration stage altogether. It's gone. There's awareness. They're looking for a solution. They get on a call with us we get them to make a decision on that call. There is no consideration. And the decision's quite easy. We're either gonna do this or we're not. And if we're not, that's fine. Let's just get off the phone and stop wasting each other's time. If we are gonna do it, then let's go. This is how we work, right? We start everything with a digital roadmap, which is what we call paid discovery. That's the product that you've got in your agency that you sell on the front end to every prospect that you're talking to, right? Again, go watch last week's replay. The simple math here is you do 44 of those a year. You'll end up with 28 clients at three grand a month. You get a million dollar a year business. Woohoo! Happy days. It's not that hard, right? Now, uh, the good thing is that this is con well. When I, went, when I made this presentation, it was converting at 75 percent. Now it's converting at 85 percent. So I really should update my slides. Now, uh, here we go. It's a bunch of social proof on how this works. Uh, so that's pillar one: is paid discovery, right? Pillar two is the growth plan method. A gr so why? First of all, why growth plans? Growth plans are easier uh, to manage 
then imagine having 28 websites on the go at one any one given point in time. I would have a heart attack. Imagine uh, managing ad campaigns for 28 clients. You'd need a lot of staff to do that. We have agencies who are multiple seven-figure year agencies. We've got 150 active clients and they've got 24 staff, right? That's a major headache, major pain in the ass. I'm not saying you shouldn't have staff. I'm just saying it's a very difficult business model to scale. A growth plan, I'll talk about the mechanics of how this works in a minute, but a growth plan is simply a plan designed to help your clients grow, right? Don't have a complicate it. That's all it is. Now, there's a few questions here that you have to unpack first, like, well, what does growth look like for my client? How will they know if they're growing? <clears throat> What's the success criteria? And these are all the questions that you figure out during paid discovery, okay? And then after paid discovery, you come back to your client and you present a growth plan. And a growth plan is a plan designed to help your clients grow. It is not a project or a retainer. <clears throat> okay, I don't know if I've got a description here. No, I don't. Let me just unpack this. A project is a website or a rebrand, right? It is typically a one-off thing that needs to happen for a client and it's typically high ticket. So you might sell a website for 10 or 15 or 20 or 50 grand, right? And then they've bought the website, they launched the website and they say, no worries, thanks very much. That's a project. That is typically outside the scope of a growth plan. I would not include building, redesigning a website, rebranding a client, rebuilding a website. I would not include that. Adding e-commerce to a client's website, adding a membership section to a client's website, I would not include that in a growth plan. They are projects. <clears throat> they would be scoped out as separate projects, right? Have you got any questions about this while I'm running through this? Please just ask the questions uh, on the live stream here so I can see your questions and then I can answer them, right? So, so, this, so a growth plan is not a project. It's also not a retainer. Retainers are typically time for money. A retainer is, hey, we'll pay you three grand a month and whenever we need something, we'll let you know and you'll jump up and down like a, you know, whatever, magic fairy and sprinkle your magic dust and get everything done. You end up just being very reactive to clients' demands. I don't want to do that. Too old, can't be bothered and I'm too grumpy and I'm, I'm sick. So I definitely can't be bothered with a client just emailing me and telling me what they need. I have a better idea. I would like to be in charge of this process. I would like to be in charge of the strategy, okay? So what is a growth plan? Uh, a growth plan is a tailored plan for growth for your clients. I'll walk through how this works in a minute. It's a, a customized plan to help your clients grow. It gives them constant visible progress and it gives them radical accountability. Right? I'll show you how this works in a minute. They're really the benefits. Correct, Zach. Reactivity is tiring. Reactivity is exhausting. Uh, I won't, I'm not going to, it's a family time slot. I'm not going to say it, but you know, you end up becoming somebody's, right? <clears throat> yes. Correct, Caroline. The growth plan would reference those sort of projects and retainers, right? Like in order to grow, stage one, you need a new website. Yes, but you would scope out the new website separately and they would pay for that separately. It's not included in the growth plan. That's just my personal preference. I know Mike Spratt has a very different business model. He gives everyone a website for free as long as they sign up to a, a, a care plan, right? Very different business model. There's no right or wrong here. I'm just trying to help you guys get to a million dollars a year in recurring because, you know, or whatever your goal is, I'm just trying to show you the easiest path, I think, to grow your recurring revenue significantly so that you can have a profitable agency without the overwhelm. So the, these are the benefits here on the screen of a growth plan to your client. A growth plan, the growth plan method gives you more recurring revenue, stickier clients, they don't churn, they hang around, and better client outcomes. And I'll walk you through how this works in a minute. The problem with projects is obviously keeping the client's uh, expectations managed, right? Hey, can we build a website? Yep, sure. And we've all been through it. We've all experienced that phone call we get from a client or the email we get from a client asking us about where the particular feature is that they requested. And it's the first we've ever heard of it. And you get that sinking feeling in your gut like, 
fuck, did I miss a meeting? What's going on? And that's because it's very difficult to manage set and manage clients' expectations when you're dealing with such a big project like a website or a rebrand, right? So <clears throat> how does this all kind of play out? Uh, Matt says, how do you charge for a growth plan if it's not a project or a retainer? What is it? Well, um, that's a good question. I'm going to get to that. Now, the good thing is you don't have to change anything you're doing or add any new services in order to start rolling out growth plans. You just need to change the way you talk about it, right? Plus, it's totally scalable, a totally scalable business model and can operate without you because it turns your services into products. I'll talk about more about that in a moment. Here's how, here's how the growth plan method works at a theoretical level. I'll give you some more details in a minute, right? Uh, <clears throat> there we go. That's why we write stories during paid discovery to avoid the surprises. Well done, Zach. Uh, growth plan method is this. Essentially, you know I like a rhyming couplet. We analyze, we accelerate, we review, and then we iterate. So what does that mean? Well, I've borrowed heavily from the growth hacking world if you're not familiar what growth, if you're not familiar with what growth hacking is, I strongly suggest you get around the work of Sean Ellis and growth hacking. Read as much as you can around growth hacking. What I like to do with my clients on a growth plan is I do an analysis. And by the way, we have playbooks and trainings for all of this stuff. We happen to have a, a program called the Growth Plan Method, which you'll get through in a couple of hours. It's pretty lean. It's extremely powerful. Uh, again, I think we've got that. Um, uh, it's usually nine ninety seven. I think you can get it for four ninety seven at the moment. Reach out to Natalie if you want the details around that. Um, the growth plan. What I do with my clients is I analyze where they're at right now and where they want to go, and I get very specific around smart goals. Right? Let's analyze what you've got going on, where you want to get to, and then what we do is we accelerate one thing at a time in order to get closer to the goals. Again, I'll give you some more details around this in a second. <clears throat> then we come back, we review what happened, and then we iterate and we go again. Think of it as like a series of experiments that we can run in order to help the client get closer to their goals, okay? Now, this is usually, if you're dealing with small business, this is usually a 14-day cycle. If you're dealing with large enterprise, nonprofits, or government, it's probably going to be a 30-day cycle because they just move slower because they're, you know, the bureaucracy and the decision makers and everyone involved. If you're dealing with a small business client, small to medium business client, you can usually get through this in a 14-day cycle. And what that means is that you're meeting with your clients every 14 days, giving them an update, analyzing where they're at, recapping what's happened, picking the next experiment to accelerate, accelerating that for 14 days, then coming back, reviewing, recapping, working out what worked, what didn't, and then iterating and going again, okay? This here, between review and iterate, this is where they get the constant progress updates that reduces churn. Instead of getting a monthly PDF, right? Please, please, for God's sake, if you're sending your clients a monthly PDF, please stop doing that immediately. They're not reading it, and if they are, they don't understand it, right? Very easy, just build them a dashboard, get on a call with them once every two weeks and say, look at what happened. This is what's going on. It worked. This is what happened. It didn't work. We don't know why we're trying to figure it out, but this is working. Look at our cost per lead. Look at our cost per acquisition. Look at whatever their goal is, right? This is how we're tracking. Show them progress every 14 days. And then we just go back and we repeat the whole process every 14 days or every 30 days, depending on the size of the client that you're working with, right? While you're analyzing what they need, you might then scope out a separate project and say, hey, we've been working together for six months now. I think we all know the elephant in the room is the website. Needs some work. We need to rebuild this website. It's slow. It's clunky. We need to rebuild the website. And yes, it's going to be an investment, but it's the, it's the one thing that's holding us back, right? Or we need to rebrand because, you know, pfft, whew, I don't know who did what you've got, but it, it looks like, you know, a year 10 art project. We need to rebrand, which is fine if that's the look you're going for, but we need to rebrand, right? We need a, a brand refresh and that's going to cost an extra whatever it is. Once you've been working with someone on a growth plan for a few months, and you've delivered results, which I'll talk about again in a moment, 
there's so much trust in the relationship, you can basically tell them whatever you need to tell them, which hopefully is the truth and is in alignment with what their goals are, and they'll believe you because they trust you, right? Because you've got them the quick wins, because you've proven value, okay? So the old way to do this was to do a free strategy call, pitch, pitch a project, and then add some ongoing services later. The new way is paid discovery, get paid to get them some quick wins on a growth plan, and then get paid for a larger project later on. Or in my world, I just refer those large projects out because I don't want to do them anymore, right? So if a client needs a new website, I just refer them off to another agency. Or if they need a rebrand, just, uh, I'm doing sound effects now, I just refer them to another agency, right? Because I don't want to do that stuff because uh, it's not in my wheelhouse, right? Um, Oh, these are testimonials. I don't know why we've got testimonials in here. I think this was a pitch uh, deck at one point. Um, so check in. Growth plans turn your services into products. Growth plans turn your services into products. Just let me know in the chat, what's the one thing in the last 10 minutes that you've gone, oh, that's new. I didn't, you know, that's, or it's dropped in. What's the one aha moment that you've had in the last 10 minutes? Sheila took someone from $97 a month to $1,500 a month, to $5,200 a month using the growth plan method. Well done. Do we have, uh, do we have any... Uh... That's clearly the wrong sound effect. I'll try and find the right one. There we go. Sheila heard from $97 a month to $5,200 a month. I can't even do the maths on that because I'm recovering from a head cold. Can't even do the maths on that, but that's a lot. That's like a 500 times increase or a 50, one of them, a 50 times increase. There you go, it's a 50 times increase. Uh, that's a lot. So um, now here's the good news is, let me just go back to something here. You don't need to change anything you're doing or add any new services. In fact, all you're doing is taking what you are currently doing for free giving your client advice on what they should do next and charging for that. That is what a growth plan is, right? And then doing the current implementation that you're doing. Let me give you an example. One of our agencies in Mavericks Club is a email marketing agency that specializes in e-commerce stores. Big shout out to Simon Chin at Flow State. Uh, they don't do SEO. They don't do web design. They don't do paid media, they don't do um, branding, they don't design logos, they don't do social media management, they don't do digital asset management like organising all your ebooks into folders, they don't do any of that stuff, they don't build membership websites, they don't build e-commerce websites, they don't do any of that stuff. You know what they do? They do email marketing, right, email flows. Yeah, Luke Hamilton says 14 day iterations is a new concept, I like it, awesome. Uh, they do email flows and they specialize in e-commerce. Their main clients are e-commerce store owners. They, don't add, they haven't added any new services to their agency. All they've done is repackaged what they were doing into a growth plan. I can't remember what they call it, email growth plan or something, I don't know, who knows, doesn't matter, who cares, it's irrelevant. And uh, Simon recently put a client through a paid discovery workshop and signed a client for a $70,000 a year contract onto a growth plan. Also had a client turn up to a call who he was certain was gonna leave, repitched the growth plan and they re-signed for another six months. So that's reducing churn right there, right? Now, what hasn't he done? He hasn't added any new services to his agency. Right? He hasn't added SEO. He hasn't added paid media. He hasn't added graphic design. All he's done is taken what he was doing and repackaged it into a growth plan. Now, let me give you a, pr a really practical way to think about this, is the next time you're having a conversation with a client, ask them if they have a chief marketing officer or a, or a chief digital strategist on the books. Do you have a chief digital strategist or a senior digital strategist on the payroll? No. Do you have a chief marketing officer on the payroll? No. Would you like one if you could afford one? Uh, yeah, that'd be good, but we just can't afford one. Well, the good news is 
We offer a fractional CMO or a fractional digital strategist service. I call myself a digital strategist. The reason I don't call myself a fractional CMO is because I don't want a client coming to me asking me to help design their booth for the trade expo that they're going to in a couple of months because I don't know how to do that and it's outside my wheelhouse and I have no interest. But I am interested in digital strategy. So I position myself as a fractional digital strategist and that's my growth plan. That's what they're paying me for. They're paying me to come up with the strategy, own the strategy, own the delivery of that strategy, keep them accountable and help them get closer to their goals by implementing the strategy that we've come up with, right? <laughs> Matt says, I'll design the booth for you. There you go. If anyone needs a booth for a trade expo, go see Matt Olson. He'll do that for you. I'll send you some referrals, my friend. Uh, the growth plan <coughs> puts you in charge of helping them design the strategy and come up with the, 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 the strategy to help them achieve their goals and then implement it. Now, I don't do any implementation, right? My, my clients have to do the implementation or they partner with another agency to go and do the implementation. I just get paid to think, come up with the strategy, keep them accountable, help them work the strategy so they can achieve their goals, right? So you don't have to change anything you're doing and you don't have to add any new services. It's just a repositioning of what you're currently doing and just change the way you talk about it, okay? Now, I did mention next week on the call, we're gonna have a special guest come in, one of our Mavericks Club members, Sean Clark. I can't even remember the name of his agency, to be honest, because I'm so foggy because I'm getting over this bloody head cold. Uh, Sean Clark is based in South Australia, my hometown, based in the lovely McLaren Vale. And he's gonna be coming in next week to show the exact slide deck that he uses to pitch someone a growth plan. Now, he's charging, I would argue, more than the average bear for a growth plan. And uh, he's doing very well. And uh, he's also got a little bit to, to say around the, the uh, mindset and the woo-woo stuff around money. Uh, and it's gonna be, I'm very excited to bring Sean on because I think a lot of people get stuck with how to present this and how to pitch it. And therefore, you don't go and sell paid discovery because you're not sure how to present a growth plan on the back end. Sean, it's a very simple, very elegant way of doing it. It's it's not complicated at all. Uh, it's so simple that it kind of doesn't make sense. It's like, well, come on, that's not very impressive. Surely that can't work. It works, it's working very well for him. So he's gonna join us next week on the live stream and uh, he's going to very generously screen share and show us what he's doing. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, Sheila Hood says, feel better, buddy. Thank you very much, Sheila. I will. I'm not going to be here for long today. I'm going to bounce out of here in a few minutes. But I just wanted to come in and share with you guys what a growth plan is exactly. And I just want to show you this again, right? This really is the growth plan there, okay? So what? He, here's the mechanics. You might want to write this down. Step one right? Meet with your client. So step one, do paid discovery. Step two, present a growth plan off the back of paid discovery. Now you can call it my fractional CMO service or my fractional digital strategy service. We had a guest on the podcast last week who I'm not sure if that's gone live yet or not that episode. Um, uh, the growth, um, uh, I can't even remember what the company's called. I'm terribly sorry. I'm, I'm still pretty foggy in the head. Um, and I can't remember the gentleman's name. He was on the podcast last week, runs a organization which is a subsidiary of Pronto Marketing, which is owned by Tim Kelsey. One of, or general manager of Pronto Marketing is Tim Kelsey, one of our coaches here at uh, Mavericks Club. They have a subsidiary company, which is a network of CMOs, of fractional CMOs, okay? So you could position yourself as a fractional CMO you could position yourself, and by the way, that podcast episode is super valuable to listen to. When it goes live, keep your eyes on wherever you get your podcasts. Um, I bloody hell, I can't remember the gentleman's name uh, or the name of the company. It was uh, growthconnect.io, growthconnect.io is the name of the company. And uh, someone will pop a link in here and, and um, we'll 
uh, tell us the gentleman's name, the guest's name who is on the podcast. It was a great episode and make sure you definitely check it out because you're going to learn a lot about what a fractional CMO is exactly, right? So you can position yourself as a fractional CMO. You can position yourself as a fractional digital strategist. Uh, you can position yourself as a fractional technical strategist if you don't offer marketing services. The point is, uh, step number two is to pitch a growth plan off the back of paid discovery. Step number three, to roll out a growth plan, meet with your clients every two weeks or every 30 days, depending on the size of the client and how fast they move. And in that meeting, we actually have a whole growth acronym that we use to run through that meeting every two weeks with a client. We follow that structure. Uh, we've got, as I said, we've got templates and trainings around all of this. And we've got Kanban boards and click up templates and everything to help you roll this out. If you want access to the growth plan method, just hit up Natalie in the group and she'll get you a special link where you can get it for half price. Uh, make sure you hit her up for that. Uh, and then we just analyze what's going on with the client. We assess the situation. We accelerate one thing every 14 days. We review and then we iterate. And this is how you get your clients quick wins. This is how you keep them on the hook and you reduce churn. And then once you've been working with them for a while, you can then pitch a separate project like a rebrand or a website or whatever the project needs to be um, and get paid separately to scope that out and to deliver that or partner with another agency to get that done, which is my preference. All right, hey, I hope you found this helpful. I am fading fast, so I do need to get out of here. Um, I'm just double checking the uh, the comments here. Growthconnect.io, thank you, James Murgatroyd. There you go, Scott Pressamone. Scott Pressamone, of course. Scott Pressamone from Growth Connect was the guest on the podcast episode that I shot last week. I'm not sure when that's live yet, uh, but when it goes live, check it out. Scott Pressamone from growthconnect.io. All right, I hope you found this helpful. Um, let me know if you've got any questions in the comments here. Reach out to Natalie to get connected with any of the resources and trainings that you need. And remember, next week, we have uh, Sean Clark, not from a high level, not that Sean Clark. Sean Clark, one of our agencies in Mavericks Club, is going to be coming in next week to share how he presents his growth plans to his clients. Uh, very successful agency, doing very well. He's coming in to share that with us, so that's going to be super exciting. All right, gang, I'm going to go and put some stuff up my nose to clear my head before I have to shoot a podcast with Mike Spratt, which I'm looking forward to hanging out with you in about half an hour, dude. Um, I'll look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day, everyone. Uh, I'll see you again here next week. In the meantime, let's get to work.